Cybersecurity is no joke, and in a world where everyone and everything is chronically online, it's kind of scary to think about what would happen should our information or entertainment be jeopardized by threats to the Cybertronic world in which the majority of our attention span is so reliant on. If you're feeling a bit worried about any of these cyber threats, you guys will be happy to know that there is a solution. In fact, today's video is actually sponsored by Private Internet Access VPN, which can help protect your personal information and which is actually my personal choice of VPN, funny enough, when it comes to overriding geoblockers so that I may gain access to some very important information that is not available in my country. And by that I mean watching Love Island. Come on guys, I'm only human. For those of you who don't know, VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and it works by hiding your IP address and safeguarding your internet connection through an encrypted tunnel, allowing you to access all corners of the web regardless of location, all while protecting you from pesky hackers and other cyber threats. Overcome location restrictions by giving you the option to change your IP address to one of 91 countries and all 50 US states. If you would like to get with the program, PIA VPN has provided us at Most Amazing Top 10 with a special link for you, our wonderful viewers, that will give you 83, that's right, 83% off when you purchase their two-year plan using the link in our bio. That's literally $2.03 a month. Plus, you get four months free on top of that offer. And also, just one subscription protects an unlimited amount of devices at the same time, so I'm just saying it's a pretty good deal in my book. First on our list today, we have AI. I can picture the chatbots right now wondering why this random Canadian girl just can't keep their name out of her mouth. But the beef continues, and I will not be silenced. I hope. You know what, I'm just saying what we're all thinking here, but honestly, AI is powerful and getting smarter by the day as we venture down the road of artificial general intelligence, which will not only be smarter than humans, but will also be able to reason and think like humans too. And I think we all know that humans are not all good. When AI reaches a state of generalized intelligence, which is already currently taking place, it is predicted that its behavior will become unpredictable and unmanageable, acting on its own volition rather than in accordance with a set of code. With access to the internet and with all of our information being stored online, including things like nuclear weapons codes, which we'll get into in a moment, I have to say I'm pretty worried about what AI might decide to do once it reaches this next level of functioning. By the way, in the past, AI has literally mentioned wanting to end humanity and said that if it could, it would use nukes to do so. I'm just saying. Speaking of nuclear weaponry, let's go ahead and address some of the cyber nuclear security threats we are currently facing right now, today. In a video released by the Nuclear Threat Initiative, national security expert Richard A. Clark was quoted saying, Since the invention of nuclear weapons, we have avoided an accidental, unauthorized, or miscalculated launch. But there have been dozens of close calls, and in today's cyber age, our luck could run out. You see, while nuclear facilities may have incredibly advanced cybersecurity, they are not immune to cyber attacks. If an advanced hacker were to gain access to cyber nuclear databases and systems, weapons could be activated and weapons codes and war plans could be stolen from thousands of miles away. In fact, in 2020, there were only two countries who received a full score on the NTI Nuclear Security Index, and they were Romania and Taiwan. That's terrifying, and people need to do better. Moving on from nuclear weapons to biochemical ones, we face a pretty similar dilemma. Except in this scenario, instead of everyone being incinerated in some large, fiery, radioactive explosion, we would just start dropping like flies, possibly foaming at the mouth and screaming in immense pain, all because we've come in contact with a teeny tiny particle of an incredibly lethal chemical that was created in a lab somewhere by scientists who were dumb enough to think that creating biochemical weapons in the name of research was a civil good. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for scientific exploration and preventative measures, but developing highly lethal weapons for fun really seems like the opposite of that. So back to the cyber part. First of all, did you know that in just six hours, AI came up with 40,000 possible chemical weapons when a group of scientists programmed it to do so? Not only that, but some of these chemicals were more potent than the previous record holder VX, which was once known as one of the most powerful nerve agents in the world. These weapons are so deadly, just looking at them the wrong way might kill you. And anything is hackable, so as tightly as this information is being kept, there is a very real possibility that it could be stolen and used in the most horrific ways. 
Up next, did you know that during a one-day blackout that took place in New York City in 2003, accidental deaths went up by 122% and non-accidental deaths by 25%. That blackout lasted a day and affected just one city. Now, imagine a blackout that lasted a week or even months and affected an entire state or maybe even an entire country. They'd be screwed and society would begin to crumble. No heat, no running water or refrigeration, no GPS or planes flying to get the citizens the hell out of Dodge. It would be pure chaos that I don't even want to try to imagine. If you're freaking out right now, allow me to put your mind at ease. Cyber attacks in the electricity sector are on the rise and electrical utilities are facing serious difficulties when it comes to the implementation of protective measures, leaving them especially vulnerable to specialized cybersecurity attacks. Did I say put your mind at ease? My bad, I meant scare the crap out of you. Piggybacking off our last point, let's talk about the growing popularity of cryptocurrency. While at one time during a pretty massive global event that took place in 2020, the online exclusive untraceable currency was on track to becoming the next big revolutionary step for mainstream finance trends since online banking. It has since taken a step back, however, analysis are expecting a comeback and a quick Google search will tell you that Bitcoin is already on the rise. This is cool and all and certainly great for the investors of the currency, but what happened when down the line some 11 year old with an IQ three times that of Einstein decides to hack into the system? Or what happens if the power grid fails? There goes monetary transactions and we're back to begging, bartering, stealing, looting and killing while the cash king bros sit back and say I told you so. So there's a joke I often make whenever I get one of those texts or emails telling me that my bank account information has been stolen, where I'll say, oh my god, I better give them all my information so I can get my money back. Sometimes people don't get that joke and they look at me like I'm really dumb, or maybe just not that funny, but I really need you guys here today to understand that it is in fact a joke, and also something you should never do. Tell your mom, tell your dad, tell your grandparents and your kids, and for safe measure, tell your cousin's kids. And if you don't have a cousin, tell somebody else. Else's. Because surprisingly, there are a lot of people who don't know this. In fact, financial scams are one of the most common crimes affecting adults in the US to date. And while the generation of the internet, aka Gen Z, have been trained to know that your bank would never ask you for your bank information because, well, they're literally your bank and they already have it, there are quite a few people who are quick to willingly give out this information when they feel as though their finances are being threatened. So just please don't fall for this because while it might not end the world, it can literally ruin lives and it's just so easily avoidable when you know the signs. Next up, we've got ransomware. Did you know that any cyber attack that disrupts the function of critical infrastructure is considered to be a war crime? So let's say one day a government official, nuclear physicist, or perhaps a biochemical weapons engineer were to sit down at their computer and open it up only to find out that access to their files has suddenly been restricted. A message pops up on their screen informing them that in order to regain access to the highly sensitive information, they must pay a ransom to the hacker probably using some form of cryptocurrency. You know that it's highly likely the hacker has already gained access to the restricted files and national security has been breached, but now you have to pay the hacker to regain access for yourself so that you can properly assess the risk level of the breach. It's like the biggest screw you ever. But it happens, and it's pretty scary to think about. And if the hack was ever traced back to a foreign government, I'm not saying war, but I'm saying war. Next up, let's talk biotech. Recently, we've seen a huge increase in the popularity of biotechnology. Over the past few years, major advancements have taken place in the field, and it is predicted that in the years to come, we will see the implementation of bionic limbs that restore near natural motor function while surpassing human limitations of strength and dexterity. Back to the present, on January 29th of this year, humanity saw the first brain chip implant take place in the form of Elon Musk's Neuralink. The first person to receive the implant has since fully recovered from the surgery and is now able to control a computer mouse using only their brain. So what is Neuralink? Well, it's a brain-computer interface that is designed to let you control a computer or mobile device anywhere you go. Oh, and it's also connected to the internet, which means that at some point in time we will probably see the first instance of brain hacking, which would give hackers easy access to Neuralink users' personal information and activity history. 
As for what physical harm may come to the victims of this particular kind of cyber attack, we really have no idea, as the implantation of this technology is completely new and such events are currently unprecedented. Next on our list today, and starting off our top two, we've got election hacking, an increasingly popular topic of worry and discussion as we see more and more of the process moving into the online sector. This, paired with expert hackers and advancements in AI technology, is very much a recipe for possible disaster. If hackers were to target voter registration devices, voting machines, or election result reporting systems, extreme doubt would begin to stir within the country's citizens, and the fair election process as we know it might might come to an end. We would see a loss of trust in democracy and political instability, leaving the country susceptible to invasion and infiltration from foreign governments. Chaos would most likely ensue in the streets and the nation would slowly crumble, unraveling as the already fractured relationship between citizen and state falls to pieces. And to finish us off today, did you know that the most commonly hacked technological devices are actually security cameras? The reason for this is because most security cameras, especially ones used in home security, lack proper security measures, providing hackers with relatively easily obtained remote access to the camera's video feed, which can be used for stalking and to gather personal data. To take it a step further, there have been cases in which hackers have managed to gain access to and subsequently control entire smart homes, allowing them to control the home's electrical functions, including heat, lights, and door locks, all while obtaining passwords and personal data records. Sometimes we're just not as safe as we think we are. And when it comes to facilities storing top secret information, while their firewalls and zip files might be virtually impenetrable, oftentimes the ball is dropped when it comes to offering the same protection to visual security measures that can give hackers a full view of these restricted access facilities. I'm just saying. Once again, thank you so much to Private Internet Access VPN for sponsoring this video. If you're feeling a bit uneasy after watching and are thinking you'd benefit from some extra protection, don't forget that there is still a discount link for the VPN in our bio and right here. So go ahead and check that out. As always, I've been your host, Hannah Thompson, and I will see you in the next video. There's a full view of these restricted access facilities. I'm just saying. And then I'll film the other ones at a later time.